Yeah, another one of my niche builds, I guess. Um, people have been asking about some of my stuff lately, so I'm going to throw some stuff out there. Uh, this one is uh, for demos using the uh, M12A1 rocket launcher. Um, so going over that, just going to start with the uh, uh, weapons, I guess. Uh, so obviously I'm using the rocket launcher. Um, star po uh, star levels or whatever perks uh, don't super matter as much. Don't super matter much. Uh, the fourth star perk is a 20% 20, 20 chance on kill to release a secondary cluster explosion. Um, I don't even know how much damage this does. Probably not much. It looks interesting sometimes. But that's about it. It's, it's kind of irrelevant. <clears throat> um... It might add a bit of AOE to an area, but yeah, I, I honestly never notice it doing anything. So, uh, attachments that I use on this, uh, I want the autoloader, which gives you handling and um, a 50% chance on kill to have the autoloader reload 15% of the current magazine. And you can probably tell that, you know, with a magazine size of uh, three rounds in the rocket launcher, 15% uh, is a fair bit less than uh, one round. That said, uh, stuff like this in AFE, it rounds up. So that 15% is a 50% a chance per kill to reload one rocket. So depending on how you're using this, you can sort of just chain it together and get, I think my record is six rockets in a row, uh, and you just keep keep going as long as you can. Um, progressive rifling, so that's fire rate, stability. Stability does not matter with a rocket launcher. Fire rate lets you shoot faster. You've got three rounds in your magazine, so might as well use them faster. Um, <clears throat> with uh, the 10% uh, extra damage to enemies with full health, um, that's for uh, enemies that haven't been shot yet. Uh, if teammates are busy with stuff closer in, or they're just around a corner or something, you'll get that extra damage, uh, which can basically increase the area of your uh, blast radius and make, make it more dangerous uh, to stuff. Uh, and then deep railed armature, which is reload speed and max ammo. And that's just what I tend to use. Um, you'll note as well here that the damage of the rocket launcher is uh, 1774. Um, have to double check, but uh, anyway, uh, on insane, uh, a runner health is uh, 2709, so that will not uh, one hit kill them. Um, however, I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, what is it on extreme? Yeah, extreme runner health is uh, 1998, so it's still too much health for them to just instantly die. But intense, you'll mow them, mow through them like water. Um, I can, yeah. But anyway, I'll come back to that. So I'm, I'm, I, I do use this on insane regularly, so no problems there. Anyway, uh, going over the attachments here. Uh, so alignment module, fire rate, great, twenty percent. Uh, stability doesn't matter. Yeah, more fire rate can be good, but I'd rather have the auto loader there to just keep going. Uh, augmented speed loader, reload speed, stability, again, auto loader wins out on that one. Uh, combat actuator, fire rate, handling and stability, yep, auto loader beats that. Uh, expanded reserves, max ammo, 40%, reload speed on hit. Um, haven't really played around with that, but I'd say it's probably fine to go for that. Um, Yeah, it's probably fine uh, if you want to experiment with that or whatever. Uh, I just like being able to just continue shooting with the, the rocket launcher, whereas this would sort of still force the regular reload every three shots. Uh, flared reach, fire rate, max ammo, you're probably better off with the uh, extended reserves, um, even though you've got the fire rate there. Um, stringing together multiple hits on the same target, like if you're going for an elite or a special, is more difficult than it probably sounds, um, especially if you're going for like a headshot or something. 
Um, so usually I'm just, you know, playing it like in, you know, a Quake game or something where I'm trying to just get stuff with splash damage. Uh, flywheel Chamber, 2% damage on hit for 3 seconds, so that stacks 5 times. Eh. It's going to give you like a max of 100 extra damage or so, something like that, probably less, and require multiple hits. It's probably not worthwhile bothering with. Uh, launch Accelerator, Fire Rate's good, Stumble Chance doesn't matter, because your Stumble Chance with Explosives is 100%. Uh, well, I've said this before, but your Stumble Chance can go over 100%, and that is beneficial to you, just because it interacts with uh, resistance uh, from enemies that are being hit. Uh, makes it harder for them to resist uh, chances of things that are over 100 Um Handling is just swapping weapons quickly, which you've already got plenty of handling on this. Uh, fire source munitions, max ammo, 20% chance on a kill to leave behind a small fire patch. Um, this one's okay, like visually speaking. Um, I like phosphorus munitions, it's pretty. Extra fire, yay. But uh, on explosive weapons, I tend not to use it much because it, it doesn't fit it as well as like some of the flamethrower weapons and things. But... Um, Given the cluster munitions this thing has, um, phosphorus munitions kind of works with it too, just visually speaking. Um, that said, phosphorus munitions in general is kind of a shitty attachment. Uh, it doesn't actually benefit you all that much, so it's really not a good choice unless you're going for the visuals. <laughs> uh, rapid dispersal unit. Reload speed and more reload speed. This one's also probably a good choice, uh, similar to Expanded Reserves. It sort of depends on if you are like me, where you're going for the chance of getting more and more rockets in your magazine uh, with each shot, or if you're fine doing patterns of uh, groups of three. So either one of those is going to basically just boost your reload speed, and Expanded Reserves is going to give you more ammo too. That said, there's a fair bit of ammo in this already, so... Uh, what's my max ammo? 65, so that's, that's a fair bit. Uh, progressive riflings, what I usually go for, that's fire rate stability and extra damage, yeah. This one's hard to beat, honestly, uh, with explosives, because that 10% extra damage to enemies with full health uh, can sort of do significant d amount of damage to them right off the bat, uh, versus other things where maybe not so much. Uh, Anti-armor stuff in AFE, I've gone over this in other videos and stuff, it's it's not a good choice, just throw it due to the way armor works in AFE. Um, not really going to go into it in this one, but it's in other videos. Um, there's a chance on hit, less damage yet. The stuff that gives procs for um, enemies dealing less damage is usually bad. Especially uh, explosives, because you don't want to be using that on Xenos that are super close to you. Uh, you'll end up shooting yourself. Um, hybrid Rifling, Fire Stability. In terms of stats, it's slightly better than Progressive Rifling that I'm using, but it's got the extra 10% damage on Progressive, so I'm sticking with that. Uh, lightweight Induction Coils. This would probably make your um, three-shot burst there sort of irregular speeding, speed-wise, because you hit a few ex uh, hit, a few, hit a few runners and then your fire rate go up. You'd fire again and hit a few more runners. Your fire rate go up. So it would probably be a little weird feeling. I tend to like sort of a, a well-defined pattern with uh, explosives. It just sort of helps. Myself and uh, teammates sort of predict when I'm going to shoot versus not. Which helps avoid friendly fire. Uh, Miller Twist Rifling. Stability handling doesn't matter much. Handling is good for swap speed. Stability doesn't matter. 20% uh, chance of hit. Enemies are slow by 50% for, for 10 seconds. Um, overall, this is a good attachment, but... You're not really going to be hitting the same target all that often. Um, most runners will live through, like one, two, maybe three shots from this, and that's it. So, like, if they're slow, great. If they're not, who cares? Um, and you're not going to be just chewing up an elite with this, really. Um, 
yeah, there's other guns this fits better on. Uh, polygonal rifling, 50% chance on hit. Enemies take an additional 10% chance for 5 seconds. Uh, that can only occur against the same target every 15 seconds. And you got a 20% fire rate. Um, that's not a bad choice for this gun, honestly. Um, because you'd lob this out at some runners or something, and your fire would be a bit higher. <clears throat> and you get a 50% chance on hit for all those runners. So some could get the 50% chance and some could not. Um, and they'd be basically, uh, when you send a fall off rocket towards them, some of them are going to take additional damage, but may not be necessary in the first place. Uh, ratchet rifling, fire and handlings, kind of whatever. Reinforced barrel, I've gone over this before. Melee anything is an insane idea when you're using explosives. Don't do that. This is a terrible attachment. Um, smoothbore. And things fine. Do 20% more damage to enemies that are at or below 20% health. Like um, a lot of explosive weapons, you're going to be dealing damage to them. And you're... If, an, uh, if a runner is below 20% health um, for this to take effect, um, you're going to kill it anyway, regardless of having this or not. So it's kind of a waste. Uh, armatures. So again, I'm going to deep route armature, reload speed, max ammo. Both good. Uh, bracing armature, that's max ammo and damage resistance while standing still. And uh, stability as well, but whatever. Um... Not really a good choice for this one uh, versus like the RPG because you're probably more in motion with the rug of the rocket launcher. I am anyway. Uh, I also like having a fast reload speed because you reload a lot with this. Uh, calibrated armature. As before, melee, melee attachments on explosives are insane. Don't do them. Uh, Got an execution harness. Same deal. Melee kills. Nope. Hybrid armature. This is kind of a middle of the road thing, like as it says in the name, it's a hybrid. Um, I wouldn't bother. Uh, kinetic enhancement harness, max ammo. If you really want the ammo, that might be an okay choice, and you didn't have other priorities like reload speed or something. Um, the melee damage is obviously a stupid idea. Uh, max ammo handling, similar there. Um, handling sort of increases your weapon swap time and your ADS speed, and I think it buffs your reload speed a little bit. Uh, things like that. Uh, quick charge armature, reload speed. Yeah, this is like the one that I mentioned before. This is probably going to make your uh, shooting a bit irregular because you're gonna get faster fire rate uh, after hitting a few things. So, although this one is just a one time, it doesn't stack. So, so probably give you a first shot and then two follow up shots quicker. I'm guessing. Uh, I'll probably give you all your follow up shots because they wouldn't stack, but they'd be refreshed. So you'd be hits. We have your 50% fire rate uh, once you started shooting, basically, until you stopped shooting, more or less. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go with it either, but it's a potential option. Uh, services and armature, handling, movement speed, fired on kill for five seconds. This one would feel irregular, especially with... Uh, Fire rate on kill. I, I don't think I'd use this one. Even though movement speed might be a good idea with this uh, build. Uh, Stabilizing armature, reload speed, and stability. Whatever. Okay. So yeah, those are my top picks for this uh, weapon. Um, <clears throat> now, the rocket launcher is very much geared for killing runners. Uh, most heavy weapons are. Um... So what I wanted after that 
was uh, demo in general is not good for tougher enemies. Um, it, it's very much a runner killer. So your rocket launcher is definitely doing that, and I'll get more into why in a bit. Um, so what I wanted here with a, a rifle is um, just the ability to do a lot of damage to elites. Um, so you've got the Astra, which I chose, and I'll go into that in a minute. Um, you got the Greppa. Uh, it's more of a DMR type thing. Um, didn't really suit. Uh, specifically, I'm looking for a, a rifle that does a lot of damage to an elite or something, especially if it's up close, because my rocket launchers are doing stuff far away. Uh, the Greppa, it's more of a DMR. It's farther away, typically. Decided it was a bad pick. Uh, that's the plasma rifle. This can be okay up close. Um, it's got pretty good DPS and stuff. You can get some decent damage out of it. Um, and again, bearing in mind, uh, demolishers are not good for getting a lot of DPS on a single target, typically. Um, rifles are, are terrible for that. Uh, but it's, it's a valid option. Uh, the Kramer all around pretty decent um i use it on other builds though so i wanted something a bit different and uh there's reasons as well uh Kramer sort of hits hard has some stopping power um i more sort of feel it's suited for uh runners and specials though when you're maybe just switching out your heavy weapon instead of that so oh that's just me it's, it's a general purpose tool uh, Pike, that one's long range. You can make it a DMR, single shot. If you got really good aim, this can be fantastic. Um, most people do not have that kind of aim. Um, I'm talking like you want like 80% plus accuracy on headshots, uh, just constantly, just without any sort of aim assist or anything. Uh, if you can do that, the Pike is a pretty good option if you want to do it. Um, otherwise. Save it for a sniper rifle. <laughs> uh, Halberd, it's got good weak point damage. Um, it's a decent option as well for going for elites, especially up close, because uh, you're going to just be focusing on headshots a lot. Um, Limbstorm rifle, uh, I like using this for anti spitter stuff typically, so it's not a bad option for elites up close. Um, there are better options though. Uh, it's a bit more longer range than most of the ones I've gone with. Um, Pulse Rifle's an all-arounder. Not bad. Uh, bullet Burst Rifle. It's basically a Pulse Rifle. It does a bit more damage. You have to click more. There you go. Uh, Scott Rifle. It's a DMR. It's pretty good, but not what I wanted out of demo stuff. I, I don't usually like Sniper Rifles or, de or DMRs with demos. Um, sniper Rifle itself. Same deal. I, I don't really want to use it for that. Uh, the so-called. I love how that rifle sounds, but it sort of doesn't do anything good enough to really be enjoyable for me. Like, it doesn't have enough damage, doesn't have enough fire rate, doesn't have enough accuracy, doesn't have enough reload speed. Like, it's just weak in too many areas. Um, I I'd love to use it more, but I, I don't. Uh, Twilight, a lot of people like. Uh, I don't personally, but that's just me. Um, most people I've noticed seem to use it as a DMR with multiple hits, so not a bad option. Uh, heavy uh, assault rifle, that's basically like the Kramer. Uh, it's comparable. Uh, it's a bit more ammo efficient. Um, the Kramer is a bit a little ammo hungry in comparison. And um, I forget which one does a bit more damage. Kramer's probably doing more damage. Uh, fire rate. Yeah, the Kramer's going to do more damage than the Heavy Assault Rifle, but the Heavy Assault Rifle you can has higher uptime, just because of the amount of ammo usage you got and so on. Uh, yeah. Stats don't necessarily say that, but that just mean the, may just be the attachments I've got it looking at. Uh, Bombard... I've never really found a use for this one. I don't know anyone who actually uses it, but... It's there. It's a burst rifle. Uh, I've listed a shot. I use it as a DMR, a, a light sniper rifle, basically. Sort of an in-between point between the scout and the sniper. Uh, but not what I'm looking for. So I decided on the Astra. Uh, the Astra is a burst auto rifle. 
What I mean by that is, is it shoots in bursts. That's a, a three-shot burst, as you can see. Uh, but even though it's a burst rifle, if you hold down the trigger, it keeps shooting, which helps, I guess. It, it's more enjoyable when you're doing like an auto-type thing up close. Um, for me, anyway. Uh, I don't like clicking a lot, if I can avoid it. <laughs> uh, the Astro is also one of the few guns that lets you mount uh, the uh, Crashy Overwatch, which... Uh, Cray accuracy and handling, whoop you do. Uh, about every third hit, remember it's a, a three round burst. Every third hit against the same enemy slows it by 40% uh, for five seconds. Effect can only occur against the same enemy once per 10 seconds. So you do one burst into an elite and it's slowed by 40% for five seconds. Not bad. Uh, that sort of gives you more time. Um, you also got the hollow points, which gives you more magazine capacity and handling, and then a 25% chance on hit to cause enemies to bleed for additional damage over five seconds. Um, that effect stacks three times. Um, this is a different bleed than um, uh, uh, Fire and Forget's bleed. Um, this is sort of a fixed, fixed amount of damage. Um, I don't remember what it is offhand. I think it's like a couple hundred or something uh, per tick or whatever. Um, and again, the stacks, so it's like, I don't know, 100, 100, 100, 100, once a second, essentially. So you get 500 damage, and it stacks three times, so you're getting like 300, 600, 900, uh, and so on. So like it, it, it adds a significant amount of damage to weaker attacks, like uh, just a rifle shot. Um, but it doesn't actually do a ton on itself. Uh, combined with the Crouchy Overwatch there, this slows things down, and this gives time for Bleed to work. Um, basically, because they're slowed, then Bleed's going to happen more often before they're super close to you. Uh, it also helps if you land a few hits, and maybe you have to dodge or something. So... It's a good combination if you can get it. And I also use the riser mount MDS. Uh, that's for the handling and uh, stumble chance on hit for three seconds. So effect stacks five times. Um, so the base stumble chance I've got is pretty low. Um, it will crank up stumble chance to something decent though per hit. So it's not bad. Um, anyway. Just review all these attachments here. So auxiliary accelerator, effective range, stumble chance. Got pretty decent range on the Astra already. So the damage fall off there, getting out to like, eh, call that 20, 30 meters or something before it even loses any damage and it only goes down a little. So, and beyond this range, like if I'm shooting max range, uh, the bleed from hollow points is still full damage. Uh, it all bleed from hollow points also ignores weak points, so that's good for like things like crushers or if you're not able to see an enemy's weak point, it's helpful. Um, but the accelerator accelerator is nothing super useful, not for the Aster. Uh, compact flash hider, fire rate weak point damage, suitability on hit, ten second for three seconds, x ten times. Um, there are uses for this. The Aster is not really one of them. Um, You've got pretty decent fire rate as it is. Weak point damage. It's pretty decent too. I wouldn't bother. Um, compensator. Fire rate again. Stability doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Again, Aster doesn't really need that. Effective range. Don't really need it. Fire rate on hit. Resets on reload. Eh, wouldn't go for it. Uh, Multi-bear compensator, weak point damage, effective range, handling on hit. And, nah, wouldn't bother with that either. Alright, stability on the recoil booster. Nah, not a good pick. Uh, fire rate and handling, also not a good pick for the slanted break. Uh, slide compensator, stability and weak point damage. Nah, wouldn't bother. Uh, weak point damage and effective range on hit for three seconds, prevent a flash hider. I uh, probably wouldn't bother with this either. So, Cratchy Overwatch is pretty standard for the Astra. Uh, hollow points. Comparing against what we got here, we got drop magazines, so reload speed, mag capacity. Not terrible. 
Um, I've already got mag capacity in hollow points, though. Um, reload speed. Eh, reload speed's good. It gets your overall DPS up, but hollow points increases your DPS, too. Especially if you're having a moment where you can't can keep shooting on something. Uh, the bleed will continue. Uh, extended magazine. So mag cap, again. Um, stability doesn't matter. So it's not really a worthwhile thing. So I stick with hollow points. Uh, heavy spring-loaded mag, so that's fire rates, double chance. Not terrible, especially if you're going for like a stumble build or something. Uh, the fire rate I don't think would be, bother, would be bothered with. Uh, inhibitor rounds. Um, this one's not... Not a terrible idea. It's got max ammo. Still, it doesn't matter, but it's got a 20% chance on hit to slow enemies by 25% for six seconds. So you can sort of double slow with inhibitor rounds and the Cratchy. So some builds go for that. It's not a bad option. Um, other slows will stack with that too. Like if you're going through a dock, if Xenos are going through like a dock suppression station and you're hosing them down with Cratchy and uh, inhibitor rounds, or just Cratchy, um, you're going to slow them to a crawl pretty fast. Um, but overall, I'd rather have the DPS, so I'm, I'm wanting the bleed from uh, all points. <clears throat> uh, between the light mag for civilian max ammo, handling, and a bit of fire rate. Wouldn't pick that. Sort of, yes, ammo's good. Fire rate, some hits. Nah, it's, it's not really doing much for me. Uh, quick loader, reload speed, max ammo, refill 10% of the magazine on kill. Uh, I'm focusing on elites and tougher enemies with the Astra, so I'm not going to be getting a lot of kills with it. So that refill is irrelevant. Uh, rapid release mag, uh, it's reload speed, handling, and more re reload speed when the magazine's emptied. Um, I will empty my magazine with this, but I'd still rather have more TPS than all points. Uh, stabilizing magazine, reload speed, mag capacity, civilian hips. This is kind of an irrelevant attachment, yeah. And tactical mag for fire and max ammo. This is generally a good attachment. Um, I just want uh, the bleed from hollow points more, so it's not as desirable to me. Uh, optics. So we've got hollow sight with accuracy handling, stumble chance on hit, so that stacks. Again, this is more for, like, if you're going for a stumble build, I guess. Um, you don't really need the accuracy, especially if you're going for elites that are going up close to you. Um, hold tab sight, accuracy, handling, effective range. Not really a good choice for the Astra. I uh, guess it's accurate enough, effective range is fine, handling is fine. Uh, hybrid sight, accuracy, quick damage. Not a bad choice, uh, but Astra doesn't really need the accuracy and weak point damage. If you're going for that, fine, but I'm going for bleed. Uh, micro dot sight, accuracy effective range, 10% damage, minus 10% fire while standing still. Um, so, this one's more sort of hold your ground, and um, yeah. Not really a good pick. Uh, micro dot sight, weak point damage, handling, zoom magnification. Aim assist on hit for three seconds. It's okay, I guess. It's, I wouldn't bother with it, though. Um, oops, shit. Reflex laser sight, effective range of handling. Don't need that for the Astra. Uh, reflex sight, effective range, and ADS movement speed. Handling on hit. Ah. It's an interesting attachment, but I wouldn't pick that for the Astra. Uh, obviously, there's got that there with a stumble chance of handling. And that's 30% stumble chance, or handling. Uh, smart assist sight, that's going to give you zoom magnification, 25% aim assist, and it's going to get your effective range uh, going out for a fair bit. That resets on reload. Um, not an astro thing, really. Would go for it. Uh, Colna MDS, uh, stability, aim assist, accuracy, weak point damage while in cover. Um, you're not really going to be in cover when you're fighting Xenos or Pathogen. It, it's usually a synth thing. So unless you're making a synth build, this, this attachment in general is kind of a worthless 
waste of space. Um, unless you want the other uh, perks on it there. But the accuracy and weak point damage while lighting cover is synth specific, typically. So yeah, that's what I put on my Astra. One of the perks. Um, so, obviously we're focusing on the M12A1 rocket launcher, which has a three-round um, magazine, uh, reload speed and all that, and um, decent amount of ammo. Uh, doesn't do a ton of damage. Uh, not enough to kill runners, typically, in one, hot, one shot. So, what I use on this is... Um, Got precision rockets. Um, I'm wanting to basically fire rockets regularly here. Um, I'll explain why in a, a moment. But I want to basically be able to fire off a rocket, and then I want to fire off sorry a precision rocket. And then I want to fire off a uh, M12 A1 uh, rocket launcher rocket, following up one after the other more or less. Um, then I've got loud and clear on the precision rockets, which increases the attached ability's damage dealt by 20% and causes to generate an additional stack of clear the room. Damage is great. Um, clear the room stacks are good too. Um, increases the radius of the attached ability by 40%. So that's going to increase the amount of clear the room I get by having the uh, precision rockets tag more enemies at once and boost the stacks I get on clear the room higher. That's, that's pretty important. Um... And I've got uh, Fire and Forget. Uh, this is very much key for this build. Um, so Microbots now debilitates enemies, causing them to take 24% more damage from area-based attacks and bleed for 8% of their total life over 8 seconds. Now if I just whip out a calculator here real quick. Uh, so what, our damage is what? 17, 74... And that's... Uh, 25%. Is uh, that going to be? That's going to bump me up to 2217 damage uh, at the center of the blast. Um, and then the precision rockets are going to do a chunk of that too. I, I'd have to double check what their damage is, but I'm pretty sure it's about a thousand, maybe a little more. Um, so at that point, you're basically softening things up, making them weak to um, uh, regular rockets, and then going nuts with the rocket launcher on those weakened enemies. So they get sort of weakened, and then you just kill them. Um, and because that's sort of the pattern that I'm using here, um, I've got a lot of cooldown uh, on my micro rockets. Um, brace for launch. I'll get into that in a sec. Um, whenever clear the room expires with quick and dirty, um, your ability cooldowns are reduced by one second for each stack that's lost. Um, this sort of setup is sort of familiar to a lot of people who sort of abuse this mechanic in. Um, uh, AFE, because precision, precision rockets with really good cooldown time can get kind of gross versus heavier enemies. Um, this build isn't sufficient to do that with an elite or something, uh, other than for a few seconds. But just something to be aware of. A lot of people like doing that for playing super lame in the game. Uh, it's not fun when people do that, but this is fine. I uh, can't do that, but for um, runners it's great. Um, so basically what this does is just get me precision rockets on demand whenever I need them so I can lob them off and get fire and forget and follow up with actual rockets. Um, I also use braced for launch. So when micro rockets is activated, you gain three seconds of immunity to most stumbles, stun, and knock effects and take 40% reduced damage. Um, because I'm trying to generally engage uh, every time I shoot with a rocket launcher with micro rockets first, I'm going to fire this first, and brace for launch is going to be active, and then I'll start shooting with the rocket launcher itself. So if I happen to do something that's very close to me, <laughs> danger close, um, it's not going to stumble me, it's not going to stun me, it's not going to knock me over, and it's going to take 40% uh, reduced damage. So... I'm sitting pretty there if something blows up in my face, typically. Uh, and that gets even better with Rough and Tumble. 
area effect effects deal 50% uh, less damage to you. So my own explosives or other explosives uh, in general are half the damage they normally do, plus that 40% uh, reduced damage off the top. So like I'm reducing the amount of self damage I do with the rocket launcher considerably here. That's very much key to this build. Um, allies, teammates, try and avoid friendly fire because neither of those applies to them. <laughs> Uh, that said, the rocket launcher is a lot safer than um, some of the other explosives because it doesn't do as much damage. So as long as you're reasonably careful, uh, you'll get a lot of self-damage, especially with the, the reduction you've got going on here. But you usually shouldn't have a ton of team damage. Although shit happens, obviously. Um, jackpot. That's helpful sometimes when um, a burst or a prowler is in the mix there. And I'll get another reload. It's sort of like it's functioning similarly to uh, the auto loader. It's got a chance, basically, more predictable chance, but a chance to reload my magazine or include more uh, another round or something. So I'm more likely to get that sort of same pattern where I'm getting additional rockets in my magazine. Um, and I'm using Demolisher Heavy Training. Um, that's for max ammo and the reload speed. And um, monster heavy expertise, increase my radius and the damage of my heavy weapons. So the M12A1, they're explosives. Um, this perk is bugged. The damage you're getting is not 10%. Uh, it's probably less than that. It's hard to tell, but it, it's not 10%. Um, looking at the other options here, uh, like I've got these cooldowns here. Um, what's it called? Um, <clears throat> recharge speed uh, perks. Um, I can probably get rid of some of these if I'm wanting to use them less often. Um, so like there's other things I could stick in here probably. But so let's just go over the uh, potential options here. Um, down and out, not super useful. I don't have any way of knocking things over or, well, blast wave. Um, or stunning them really. So like it's, yeah, you could blast wave things down and doing it get some more damage out of it, but you don't usually need that. You're using precision rockets more, and you're getting the, the fire and forget weak, weak damage there. Weakened damage. So, like, down and out's an option, especially with last wave, if you're going for more of a last wave oriented build, especially. But, overall, meh. Uh, ready and able, break up stuns 50% faster, or 25% faster, and after being stumbled, you're immune to stumbles for a longer period of time. Don't care, because I've got brace for launch. Um, reactive charges, this one's pretty good, especially for survivability. Um, so getting hit by melee attacks triggers a concussive blast, basically an auto blo uh, blast wave, um, knocking back to nearby enemies, occurs once every 30 seconds. Uh, that might be one to stick in there if I pulled one of the um, uh, uh, recharge speed reduction uh, perks off. I just stick uh, uh, reactive charges in there instead. Maybe get a, a one uh, and a three for uh, recharge speed. Uh, hold still. Not a terrible idea, but your allies shouldn't be getting grappled a ton. So, like, planning for this is kind of silly, usually. Um, that said, uh, other than with um, flamethrowers, um, enemies do... or ally... <laughs> friendly players do not take friendly fire while grappled. So you can shoot them and whatever's on top of them or whatever um, with your rifle, with your explosives, uh, all sorts of things, just not flamethrowers, and they won't take any damage until they're not grappled anymore. That said, uh, that can go very badly if uh, your grapple ends before your rocket gets there. <laughs> so uh, if they manage to struggle off that face hugger you're about to zap, uh, oops, your teammate goes down. Uh, hazard seals, don't really need that. Uh, it's good for 5-3 um, uh, or something, um, but other than that, I wouldn't bother. Rampage is generally a bad perk. Um, killing enemy grants a stack of Rampage, 25 stacks your fire rate, reload speed, movement speed are greatly increased, or your stability is decreased. Last 8 seconds. This perk is bad because you can't control when this is. Um, if you get, you know, 25 kills, um, your rampage is active, and it goes away after 8 seconds. doesn't matter if there's 50 enemies in front of you or zero. 
so. Um, kind of irrelevant for that. Also kind of irrelevant. Also irrelevant, um, rockets and grenades, like physical projectiles in the game, and do not have fall off. So you fire them downrange, way, way, way far away from you, and they're doing full damage still, so it's fine. Uh, the downrange perk is not a good choice for them. And the Astra, I'm not using it long range, so I don't care. Can run tactics. Wouldn't bother with that either. Fitness training, incoming healing max health. Yeah, it's an alright perk, but I, it's not what I'm going for in this build. Uh, resilience, stun resistance, 10% movement speed. speed. Nah, I wouldn't bother with this one either. Keep pinned. This is generally a bad perk for explosives. Anything you want to do, uh, want to keep far away from stuff with. Uh, synths are okay with this. Um, Xenos will typically do more damage than these will reduce. It, it's not going to matter, basically. Uh, bedside manner is always good. Um, you can pick up allies who are gone down much faster. Their bleed out time is longer. That's important on higher difficulties. Uh, surgeon's hands that reduce, uh, prevents you being stumbled out of reviving people or interacting with things. Can be useful, uh, but generally not what I'm going for with this build. Uh, Lancer heavy training in case of, uh, instead of demolisher heavy training, so it's demolisher heavy training is max ammo and reload speed. Lancer heavy training is handling a magazine capacity and max ammo, but not as much. As I've got here, like, my switch speed is pretty quick. Um, usually I've got a bit of time to switch to, uh, my rocket launcher, and then if I need my Astra, it's basically instant. So, like, I'm not needing handling at this point. Um, what are they looking at? And the magazine capacity doesn't matter, really, because I'm going to have three shots and maybe more. And max ammo, I'm getting more. Yeah, and my reload speed isn't being improved here. So, demo heavy training is a better choice for the rocket launcher. Um, let's just compare these real quick. So, Demolitor Heavy Training, or Heavy Expertise, that one's Radius of Damage. This is sort of a, a given. You want to have this one if you're using explosives. Um, there's just no better option, really. Like, look at the other options here. Uh, Fire Instability. I'd rather have the Damage and um, Radius. And then on Lancer... Uh, fire and reload speed, again, I want the damage and radius, and uh, effective range doesn't matter for explosives, and stumble chance, that's already 100%, so not a good uh, perk, really, uh, for explosives. Uh, precision rockets, again, I want to be using that um, more often, otherwise concussive rockets might have been a useful choice there, or default rockets if I want more perk space, but um, being able to fire more precision rockets more often helps a lot with uh, how this class works, how this build works. Um, you're having to be a lot more restrained with the other rockets because they don't fire as often. Other micro rockets, yeah. Uh, assault and battery, shark hit by blast, reduces cooldown by 20 by 10% up to 20% or 50%. I can't read apparently. Um, this is always good if you've got a blast wave oriented build. So if you've got space for it, slap that on. Uh, it reduces your uh, cooldown times, and you always sort of want that. As it is, my blast wave is set up for emergency use, basically. I've got nothing on it. Um, days confused. Enemy see the blast wave are days, which decreases their movement speed and damage dealt by 20% for 10 seconds. So, it's basically just a slow and a debuff to their damage. It's not super useful. Um, other than just keeping things away from you a bit for a bit longer after Blast Wave. If you're going for a Blast Wave oriented build, like a big radius or something, that might be a good idea. But generally speaking, I wouldn't bother. Uh, Armed and Dangerous. Clear the room also increases ability damage. Not a bad choice. People like using that on um, 
cheese builds with precision rockets and stuff, but you don't need it for this setup at all. So, and yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. It's basically my sort of attack pattern here. Say we've got a runner over there where uh, I think that's her air or whatever is at. Basically, just blob a precision rocket and fire a rocket or two. And her. The Xenos that are in that vicinity are basically dead at that point. We go in for runners, typically. So if you've got, like, you know, a group of, you know, two, three runners there, just, you know, lob a precision rocket and fire a regular rocket or two. And uh, that's going to be pretty cleaned up pretty fast. Uh, and obviously you're getting, you know, multiple targets in, in each shot and stuff, and you're reducing your own friendly fire damage, so, like, don't be afraid to get in front of, uh, in, in stuff's face with this, because you're taking a lot less uh, self-damage than otherwise you'd be otherwise getting. Uh, obviously you don't want to be, you know, being right up against something, but, uh, close is, is fine, as long as your teammates aren't there with you, because they're not protected that way. Um... And again, the, the rocket launcher will often reload itself, so you get extra shots than just the three there. And uh, sometimes if something's really close, or if it's going after a teammate or something, I'll launch a precision rocket instead. And that's just to uh, stumble it, knock it down, maybe kill it with the, the, the uh, damage it does, uh, especially if it's been softened up a bit on the way in. Um, but your abilities don't do uh, friendly fire damage at all, so when stuff's close to teammates, you're always better off using the uh, precision rockets instead of the real rockets. Um, so can be super useful that way. Uh, and then obviously when heavier stuff comes out, whip out the Astra and just start going nuts on it. Anyway, that is that build. I will link some gameplay footage as well of using this build. <laughs>